Well, when I was 19 years old, I took out a little notebook, and it was one of the first things I wrote down for this book that I was to write 40 years later. And I wrote a note to myself. It said, Dear Wayne, and I still have it, don't die <laughs> with your music still in you. And it became a theme in my life that all of us show up here into this world. We are intended here by a source from which all things are intended. Everything comes from that source. And everything that you needed for this physical journey was in that moment of your conception and even before. But most of us have let go of that dream. Or we don't know how powerful we are. When I was in the third grade, I came home from school and I said to Mrs. Scarf, which is the lady whose home we lived in, she had 52 some children living in that home. I said, what's a scurvy elephant? She said, a what? I said, a scurvy elephant. She said, where did you hear that? I said, well, I heard Mrs. <coughs> Mrs. Poole, who was my third grade teacher, telling Mrs. Smith, who was the principal, outside of the classroom that Wayne Dyer was in her classroom and that he was a scurvy elephant. She got on the telephone and she called the principal and the principal said, oh, that's Wayne, he gets everything mixed up. She didn't say that he was a scurvy elephant in her classroom. She said that he was a disturbing element in her classroom. <laughs> and I think you have to understand that becoming a scurvy elephant or a disturbing element is a part of the process of not dying with your music still in you. That there is something that you showed up here to become just like there was something that allowed you to grow into this body that you're in. The same force, the same field of intention that intended you here to be in this body in the shape that it is in, in the size that it is, in the color that it is, in the shape of its eyes, in the color of its hair, whether you have any or don't, whether it falls out or doesn't, all of that. It was all intended here. And also everything that you were to become. And there is a sense inside of you, someplace in a very quiet place, an inner sense, an inner Tahiti, an inner island of peace that knows. You know that you're not this body that you're in. You know where it's going. You know it showed up from nowhere. N-O-W-H-E-R-E. And when it went from nowhere, it showed up in now here. N-O-W-H-E-R-E. -E. It's all the same, just a little question of spacing. So now you're in now here, most of you. And you look around and you look at yourself and you watch your body go through its motions and where the hell do you think it's going? Back to nowhere. From nowhere to now here to nowhere. But while it's here, there is something burning inside every one of us. And all we have to do is understand that strangest secret. And the strangest secret is we become what we think about. Our thoughts are the magic elixir. I remember being in that, in that orphanage and a snowstorm would come and there were two snow shovels in the basement of that house. And I took that snow shovel that was downstairs, there were two, one had the edges all curled up and you couldn't make much money with a snow shovel with edges that were curled up. There was another bright shiny one that Mr. Scarf had made himself. And I used to go down there when it would start snowing and it seemed to snow a lot more in those days than it does today. And I would sleep with that snow shovel. And I would go outside at 5 o'clock in the morning, wake myself up 5, 6 o'clock in the morning, and I would shovel everybody's walk on Tucker Street. Everybody. I didn't ask if it was okay and would you like me to and could I and maybe and so on. I just took the initiative and I went out there and shoveled their snow. And then I went back later that morning with my best little Oliver routine because I was cute. 
it may not look like it now, but I was then. Cute little blonde hair, and I had little, you know, and I would stand there, and I would just tell them that I shoveled your snow for you this morning. And sometimes I get a nickel or a dime. I even got a quarter a couple of times. Doesn't sound like much, but that's four thousand dollars in today's money. Okay, uh, and it wasn't like there was something in here that said this is what you do, and you act upon what it is that you feel in here because that thought that you have is something. In the Course in Miracles, it says, if you, when I take this microphone to speak, and I'm being introduced as Gary was introducing me, I repeat a line from A Course in Miracles. And the line that I repeat says, if you knew who walked beside you at all times on this path that you have chosen, you could never experience fear or doubt again. You couldn't do it if you had a knowing that you weren't alone. If you knew it from in here with that burning desire. And it is that connection, it is the ability to go and connect to that. 